James, James Cheroge, born again, Christ is Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we worship you, we give you glory. We give you honor for giving, this, giving us this opportunity to hear from you. How we praise you because you have been so kind to us. Even at this season, and this time that you have given us this opportunity to hear your word. How we pray that God is going to bless us. As we continue to listen and to know you and to understand you through the word. May we receive the blessings that you have prepared for us this afternoon. How we pray for our bishop as he comes. May you continue blessing him for your glory and for your honor. We thank you and we bless you because you are good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome bishop in the name of Jesus. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Oh, wonderful. God bless you. We are, I'm back again. Actually, I, I believe I'm going to live longer. Longer. I don't know whether it is longest, but longer. By God's grace, because there are a lot of assignment in my vision. Thank God for part of, my, what, part of the vision that God gave me in 1982 when I was rising as uh, to the ministry. is now getting fulfilled the 10,000 seater. 10,000 seater church. And in Jesus Christ's name, I hope you have heard about it. And we are now on that project. In it, at the center of it, is in a Robby Kagudo Road. And I've seen, I've seen God bless people through this. I prayed for many days. And God said he is going to raise millionaires. Not just for that project. For life through that project. And therefore, you get details of our account, get details, you got my number, get it, and, and you can plan to walk with God in a covenant way, every month, every month, every month. We are trusting God to clear pay, payment of the loan within the next three years. Just join us, we'll be communicating with you. Let us know how God is using you in our project. Uh, get the details. And God you bless you. It is finished. That's why we are now. This message continues this part four. Part four. You know, our main text is John 19.30. When Christ cried and said, it is finished. We have already made a, a very clear, clear explanation of what it means. But now, let's see. Because it is finished, Christ overcame all. Now, we have weapons for our battle determined and available. In 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4, Bible talks about, about weapons. And the Bible says, and I trust in God, that is 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Because of the level of complete work of Christ on the cross, that level has determined, has provided weapons of its own kind, of its level of power, its level of authority, level of fire, level of victory. And these weapons, they are not carnal. They are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. You realize that in Ephesians chapter 6, as Paul was narrating the the weapons. One thing he said, finally brethren, verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In other words, be strong in the Lord and in the, his, his level of power. His level of might. And the Bible says, number one, in, in warfare there is a defensive weapon and offensive. If you go to verse 11, it says, put on the whole armor that you may be able to to start against the waves of the devil, the tricks of the devil. There's the battle 
where Satan uses not force, but craftiness, tricks, as he did to Adam and Eve, to turn the whole armor. And there are times Satan uses demons, satanists, witches, powers. And that, the Bible says, therefore, in verse 13, take up the whole armor. Take up, take up, take up, take up. Now, you start with cover. You are already covered. Now is the issue of now taking up the armor. The armor. And then says, when you take up the armor, you are able to withstand the e in the evil day. Evil day is when is the day of battle. When you now realize this is the devil now. This is the man or woman Satan is using. This is a situation have, that has been set by the evil people. Yes, I will be able to destroy that. I've met Satanists. Now one day before we started this project, somebody came and said, Bishop, I was sent to, to kill you. Before you inaugurate the 10,000. And I said, I can't die. And the, and, the, and the agent of the devil fell down. I've met people. And I tell the truth, friends, in Jesus Christ's name, one thing that has really consoled my heart is Jesus and who he is. Can you imagine his weapons are battles, uh, weapons now for our warfare are already set. And there is, it doesn't matter how high, wide, complicated the demon is. The weapons to handle those demons are very final and clear because it is finished. It is finished. Because it is finished, Jesus has imparted on us very clear victory. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, when Jesus called his disciples, he had already sent them with the power of a demons, but they came back saying, Jesus, demons obeyed us when we cast them out in your name. But he said, now, you people, you dealt with the demons, but have seen the chief of demons, Satan himself, fall on you like a lightning. You, you, you realize this? Christ before gave them power of demons, so they had power of demons. But as they did it, Satan himself, the lure of demons fell on them like a thing. And Christ said, now, come back. Come back again. I want to give you weapons level 2. And the Bible says, verse 19, uh, Luke 10, verse 19, Luke 10, verse 19, it says, behold, I give you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions. Serpents and scorpions are witchcraft powers, satanic, strange powers that Satan is using. They can cause diseases that always oppress you. They can cause you to be, a, to, to be poor. They can, something that you gradually terminate you, something that you gradually destroy. It's like curse, curse, strongholds of Satanism. I give you power to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Now, not only demons, the owner, the chief of demon himself, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Remember, they required cover. When they had gone out to the demons, when Satan fell on them, Christ noted these people need cover. He said, nothing will, will whatsoever hurt you. Another thing, when Satan fell on, on them as they healed the sick, Christ showed these people require power over Satan himself. He gave them authority over the enemy. And then Christ said, these people require cover against some satanic wax that attacks God's children. Uh -huh. And then God gave that power. And therefore, in just Christ's name, vic what I want to say to you, friends, there is a clear final victory over Satan and his works because it is finished. And that's why in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 11, it says, And they overcame Satan by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. And they never love themselves to the end. They love Christ more to the end. And, and, and it's, it's so clear, it's so clear. And because Christ overcame death, our testimony is final. We have uncompromising 
testimony. We have uncompromising testimony. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Yes. From verse 31. The Bible says. What then shall we say. To these things. If God is for us. Who can be against us. I tell you uncompromising. Final testimony we have. Because Christ rose from the dead. He who did not spare. Verse 32. Who did not spare his own son. But delivered him up for us. Or how shall he not with him. Also freely give us all things. If he gave, he gave his only son. He can give all other things. Alongside with his son. Oh clear way of receiving answers. Victory. Verse 33. He who shall bring a judge against God elect is God who justifies. If God in his throne has justified me, which other court, which other person, which other demon can come around and say I'm not justified? Oh, it's final, final, final favor. Verse 33. Mm -hmm. Who condemns? Who shall bring? Verse 34. Who is he who condemns. It is Christ who died. And furthermore is risen. Who is even at the right heart of God. Who also makes intercession for us. Yes. If Jesus is so active. In his right office. Day and night. As my advocate. As my intercessor. Hey. So active. Right at the right heart of God the Father. Praying for me. Yes. Telling the father things about me. Then if Jesus is my intercessor, my mediator, my advocate at the right heart of the father. Who can condemn me? And then the Bible says something very good. Because Christ has risen from the dead. It is finished. The Bible says. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. Mm -hmm. But at seven. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor ages, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor head, nor depth, nor any other creature thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is, in, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because Jesus overcame death completely. And it is finished. Our testimony is so powerful and final. It has no space of defeat. I say that's very powerful in Jesus' name. We are more than conquerors through him. Who said it is finished. Through him who died for us. Because Jesus overcame death. The way of blessings. And the way of blessing is clear. And the promises of God. Are now effective. No promise of God. Can fail. There is effectiveness. In the promise. Of, and when Jesus rose from the dead. And overcame all powers of darkness. All what Christ. You know the Bible says. When Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the grave. They just said. He is alive just as he said. And because he is alive just as he said. I want to declare to you. All other promises are real. And are, pro, are, are made effective just as he said. The promise of resurrection happened just as he said. And I said to you, any other promise is effective just as he said. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, you can read it, chapter 1, verse 20, all the promises of God that are there are yes and amen, that God may be glorified through us. The promises are effective. And nothing can hinder them. If you are clear 
and you don't mix Jesus with anything else, let Jesus remain as pure as the overcame death. Promises you just be yes and amen that God will be all ever, ever be glorified through your business, through your family, and through your life. I want to destroy everything that has risen against God's will in your life. Yes, if it is disease, where you are sick, touch your body. If you have pain, touch that pain. If you have a, 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 a nailing child or husband or whatever, touch them. I command healing on them. I say I command healing on them. I rebuke death. I rebuke oppression. I command life because it is finished and Christ overcame death. Amen.